But if you're comfortable with uh, hitting on chicks in real life, like you've got a huge leg up because every other dude, th they're total fucking pussies. And, you know, they're texting like and, and a chick getting hit on in person is super unusual. Like I was at a gas station the other day. I, I was going to work out and whatever. So I'm in the gas station and there's a uh, I would put she was a mid to late 30s chick, but fairly well put together maybe 5'11 she was a tall chick right and she she got in just in front of me in, in line and I'm looking at her and I'm thinking you yeah, know okay so how am I going to open this one right and uh so I noticed that she's wearing flats self-conscious about her height or whatever right oh and she bought a pack of smoke so I was like oh, okay that's it right so she's just walking past me I says you know those things are going to stunt your growth right and she's <laughs> that's a 12 yeah, so she spins around and she's got this fucking boss babe attitude, and she goes, basically, it was it was a shit test, right? And uh, I was like, oh well, you know, th that's not an issue or whatever. The the growing's done. Right? She kind of got in my face, and I just fucking grinned at her, right? And I didn't even respond, and I just fucking look at her, and she realized, like, just with the fucking look on my, because you know it was a pushback. Right. And I did, I was just, I was laughing at her essentially. Right. And then she realized I, and I saw all of this in her body language. So it went from like, shut the fuck up, you know, uh, you know, Chester, the molester to, Oh, you're fucking hitting on me. And she was like, all of a sudden she's like, Holy shit, this guy's hitting on. And she lit up. Right. And I, that's just where I left it. These chicks are not used to being hit on in person. And when you do that, it is so unusual that like you can be the most awkward motherfucker and you've still got a leg up on these texting boys yeah. who are sitting on their fucking couch. Do it in person and your success rate will be, I, I would suggest, pretty high. I will quote this one woman in San Francisco, uh, did a workshop up there, and these guys kept pestering me about the opening line. And I said... There is no opening line except hi, John White. Isn't this a nice wedding? And they just didn't believe that. And this woman in like two rows back said, all I want you to do when I smile at you is come over here and say hi. I'll take it from there. And they, if I could convince men that's true, they would be fine. Because women are lonely just like we are. And they want to have companionship and sex, but they don't know how to get it started or mommy beat it into their heads. Don't talk to the man first. All that bullshit. So just, and she wants you to walk over there. She doesn't want to walk over to you. She was terrified of uh, failure more so than dudes. Like dudes have got, you know, uh, approach anxiety, but women have got it like in multiples of what any man has. So uh, I, when a chick is hitting on a guy, all she does is, you know, well, you know, body language, you know, turn towards, give a smile, look too long, which is basically, that's their form of, of making a move on a guy is making themselves available. So, you know, as soon as you recognize an indicator of interest, like, fuck, it's like you said, all you got to do is you go over and say, hi, my name's fucking Bruce, right? What are you doing? And, you know, that's it. I agree. Sophie was on here. And I said, what's the body language? She said, well, when he turns toward me, I know I got him. And she never read the fucking book. <laughs> well, yeah. well, women are so much better at it. Like, oh, you know, sure. you... Wait, I got to tell you something more important. One of the drafts of the book, I don't know which one, or date, I mean, maybe in body language, they are, when they go to a bar, they're really uptight. Because the worst thing that could happen is nobody makes a pass at me. That's the ultimate fucking failure. Here I am in all my good shit, and nobody did a thing. That's the ultimate fucking fear. Nobody will even say anything to me or even look at me. I said, that's right. I, I did that by myself. I just watched. Because yeah. they, somebody's got to make a move or I'm a fucking failure. And so you're just viewing the crowd. And you see, a, if you spot a chick, who is not getting attention, she is fucking easy, easy prey. Yes. I always went after the fucking easy ones. <laughs> Jesus <Me too>. fucking... <laughs> it must be like you realize the chicks that are going to be less of a challenge 
and what you get with those chicks is there's a reason that, that they're less desirable because they've, they've got, you know, they're fucked up in some way. Right. And which makes it, they're easier to land, but they're also, they're, <laughs> they're the big fucking headache too. Right. Well, one of my favorite authors said, there's a price for everything. Take what you want and pay for it. That's, you, you're rephrasing exactly what I said, but in, in much better terms. <laughs> Somebody taught me. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. Huh. It's a, it was on Brandon's wall in a different version. It was it said, Spanish proverb. God said, everything has a price. Take what you want and pay for it. Say it. Everything has a price. Not doing anything has a price. Well, it's funny because, you know, I think I'm actually even familiar with that, but I've never applied that to in this context before. I just haven't connected those dots before, but it's, you know, it's abs absolutely true. The hot, crazy matrix. It's a yes. <laughs> Everything's a trade off. And he puts it down and like a good engineer right, right here. You want this is a sweet spot right here. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Yeah, and apparently that was the first take. Like this, the the backstory on that is apparently the the guy who filmed it, uh, this other guy was they were driving somewhere together, and this guy starts explaining this, and the guy who filmed it said, "Hey, we got to get this right." And so they did yeah, that, and it's the wall, yeah, There's yeah, first production value at all. Oh yeah, sure. it, it, God, that was so fucking perfect, right? I think it lends to it in, in the authenticity. Because you can yeah. believe this guy knows what he's talking about. And it presents <laughs> it in such an engineering way. He could have just had a pocket protector and assured it would have been absolutely perfect. That might have been overdoing it, though. <laughs>